Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 360, Sex and Depression. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Last week, we were having a conversation about orgasm and depression, and we discussed the, the realities of depression, unmedicated depression, and the fact that if you are depressed over time, one of the things that's probably going to happen to you is you're going to lose interest in having sex, or you're going to have a negative impact in terms of your ability to have sex, in terms of being able to be aroused, or in terms of being able to achieve a payoff, uh, an orgasm. So then we began to discuss the various antidepressants, and we talked about mm-hmm. why you would get medicine for depression, the two kinds of exogenous depression and endogenous depression, and mm-hmm. how those antidepressants play out for the depression, but also how they play out in terms of uh, their own contribution to side effects of sexual mm-hmm. experience or sexual behavior. So this week, we want to talk further about that, and we want to talk in particular strategies. If you are depressed and you are put on an antidepressant and you recognize that that is causing disruption in your ability to experience sexual desire, have libido, in your experience to be aroused, have an erection or be lubricated, mm-hmm. uh, or if you have a negative side effect, uh, like uh, those are negative. Well, I mean, even more <laughs> severe. More negative. Priapism. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when people take ED drugs, they always have a warning about it. if you have a four-hour erection or longer mm-hmm. or a painful erection, go to the emergency room. You can have that, or you can have clitoral priapism. A female can have the same mm-hmm. thing. Uh, or a, another side effect that's more rare and is fairly unusual uh, of a spontaneous orgasm while yawning. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I, not many effect, people complain not, of that. <laughs> probably because they're embarrassed. And yeah. It's not about being sexual. It's just about that it happens. Uh, so there are side effects that you need to be aware of. And where we had gotten to our discussion point was it's important for you to have this information. But then we began to talk about the interplay uh, around this topic in your relationships, in your sexual relationships. How does your partner uh, access this information? Do you share? Do you talk? Or, or you, you make them aware? I have these issues. It's not about you. It's not about my attraction to you. It's not about my desire for you. It's about my body having this problem. And so what? when I have clients that are dealing with these things, typically I will say to them, you need to understand and have a conversation with your partner about the issue of initiation. If you're depressed or you're on an antidepressant, you're not going to ever think of initiating sex. So if your partner's sitting over across the room thinking, oh, you know, it's been a while, I'd, I'd like to <laughs> do something, they need to initiate and they can't get offended or hurt. They can't take that as a sign of I'm not attractive or he or she doesn't desire It's hard me. not to feel that if, way. For, for this moment in time while he's on this antidepressant or she's on this antidepressant, it's my job to say, hey, what about this? And so because the... The range is all over the field. Mm -hmm. People have side effects 15% to 70%. People on uh, antidepressants have these side effects. So one of the side effects is you don't think of it. You don't have the libido, Mm -hmm. but you can respond. If somebody calls it to your attention, you're like, oh, hey, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And you can do things. The second issue that frequently comes up as a negative side effect is not being able to get or maintain an erection or be lubricated. And so you can have the arousal and you can start to have sex and then all of a sudden, it just goes away. Mm-hmm. It like just goes away. Frustrating. And men in particular mm-hmm. are very embarrassed about that. Women, it's more a case of it becomes painful because mm-hmm. they're not lubricated. And so they're like, stop, it hurts. Uh, so you have to understand if that happens, what's going on. Mm-hmm. And your partner has to understand what's going on. And, and, and as a courtesy, if it happens to you, you should do what you can to make sure that, that if your partner even finished, they get finished, that they get taken care of. At that moment... The solution to the problem is about intimacy and not about payoff for you. And you have to know that. You have to be aware of that. It requires communication. And a lot of times doctors 
mm -hmm. have to have these conversations with mm -hmm. their patients because historically they have not. And a lot of patients don't have this information. They don't know. Most doctors don't want to talk about sex. I understand they that, don't. but it's a mistake. They feel that they're actually embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, which is funny because we have to deal with all kinds of things about the human body. And but for some reason, sex is the one thing that doctors don't like to talk about. Well, and the third side effect that we talked about in the previous podcast was you get to the point where you don't have an orgasm. And so you don't know when you're finished. Right. Uh, that so. sounds like a difficult problem to have, but it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so often, if you're on an antidepressant, it complicates your sexual life, your right. sexual experiences. It does. So we've come up with some strategies. If, if these are starting mm -hmm. to be problems that you're you're experiencing, and the first and most important strategy is you and your partners need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to talk about what's going on so that neither one of you perceives it as a rejection, an abandonment, a statement of uh, don't love you anymore, don't desire you anymore. Because that's not what's going on. It's your that, body. That's a long-lasting problem. A long-lasting really damage, damage to relationships. Yeah. So, that is that's the most important thing, and that's something you can do yourself at home. It doesn't require a doctor's visit for that. Talk. But my yeah. but my next thing is yes. is that one one of the things people don't do if they're prior to menopause or prior to age forty, um, women who are on antidepressants for almost any reason. Uh, may not be orgasmic anymore, may not have libido, and if they're on, if they're on birth control pills, birth control pills lower testosterone, so they have a double whammy. So their testosterone isn't there, which usually increases orgasms, increases libido, increases just the sexual experience, and it also lowers their estrogen, which helps them with lubrication. Okay. So that many people on birth control pills are dry and have no sex drive or have low sex drive, we add antidepressants to it, it's over. You know, they just, they have birth control by not having sex like ever. The perfect storm. Yeah, so so one of the things that a, a younger woman on these medications can do is to try, have their, their doctor figure out a different birth control, maybe an IUD or something like that, so that they don't have to have the hormonal suppression that birth control pills cause and their testosterone can come back and their estrogen come back, can come back and that may be enough to allow them to take the antidepressant. So that's one thing. If they're postmenopausal, it's much more frequent to have these side effects if they're female. Uh, usually the men, men have enough testosterone before 40 that that's not the issue. But, but, for, but for women after 40 and for men after 40, oftentimes the fact that they, their testosterone's low or they have a low thyroid, and that's often an after 40 thing uh, or an after 40 diagnosis. So that needs to be evaluated. And my easiest at-home method of figuring out whether you have low thyroid or not is before you get out of bed in the morning, you take a thermometer or even one of those disposable thermometers, put it under your tongue for one minute, look at it, and if you're not 98 degrees or above when you wake up in the morning, then you have low thyroid. That's so you it. You use one of those basal temperature thermometers like They're they just use regular for temperatures. I mean, that's really just a regular temperature, yeah. a th regular thermometer that says basal thermometer. Basal means you have Something haven't, else to sell. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That means you haven't gotten out but of But you do want to get an oral. Yeah, an oral, th yes, an oral thermometer. <laughs> and you do want to, I mean, the 98 only works if you're working with an oral temperature. Other temperatures are different. So, oral thermometer and I mean, it was just, we just labeled them differently for, right. for fertility reasons. But it just means you haven't gotten out of bed and moved around and created heat by moving around. Mm -hmm. And you leave it under your tongue for a minute. If it's low, then your thyroid's low. That's easy. We can, you can go, go to a doctor who's sympathetic to that, which is not that easy to find. But Most of them get a who blood will test. treat, and the blood tests don't all, aren't reliable. Right. I, I'm getting less and less impressed with blood tests for thyroid because... That, it just isn't reliable. And if you're depressed, you need to know if your thyroid's really working or not. Absolutely, because it can cause or It can cause depression. depression. Yeah. <laughs> and you're taking a drug for depression. You don't want to have to take a drug for that when it's really thyroid. But testosterone also is very important. And if you have the symptoms of low testosterone, we've talked about that, mm -hmm. but they cross over with depression. Right. So it, it's fatigue and low libido and um, low orgasm and... Um, body aches, loss of muscle mass, 
uh, fatigue after you exercise, uh, migraines. Let's see, what else? If you're over 45 yeah. and you recognize some of these symptoms, it's because it's pretty common for you to have low testosterone. And many doctors don't understand testosterone, so they just treat you with antidepressants. Right. So it may be a mistake of diagnosis and treatment, but first you gotta get your hormones right, then you address your antidepressants. So right. if your hormones are right, then you're less likely to have sexual side effects from antidepressants. Then, if you still have sexual side effects, right. then the next, the next method. Well, then you start to talk to your doctor, and I'll say this now, and I'll say it again at the end. Never play with your drugs or your dosages of drugs without discussing it with your mm -hmm. physician. That's right. Don't just decide, you know what, I'm going to stop taking this. I don't think it's helping me. Oh, my gosh. Especially that could be an terrible on antidepressants. And if you've been on an antidepressant for six months or a year, you need to wean yourself off, or even less than that, but but you need if, if you decide to come off of it, if, if you talk to your doctor and say, you know what, I think... I think I don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. The doctor says, well, let's find out. They will scale you off of it. You've been taking it every day. Maybe you take it uh, every other day. Uh, you go to every third day. or you know, they, They'll help you figure out a way to come off of it. Don't just do it on your own. You can have some real negative experiences. Yeah, and that's it's just not advisable. Yes. So you discuss with your doctor the possibility or the strategy of maybe taking a drug holiday. If you think it's been a while or your partner saying, you know, even though you're on an antidepressant, I have some needs here. Are you interested in helping me with that? And you say, well, but it's a drug. Well, you can take a drug holiday. So if you don't take your pill on Friday, then on Saturday, you're more likely to not mm -hmm. have the side effect right. because it's the, the drug is metabolized. So mm -hmm. that is a strategy. Take a drug holiday. If, if you know you're going on a special weekend, if it's your birthday or, you know, you're spending the night in a hotel somewhere. I will tell you what my husband calls that. Anyway. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be wise. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's one strategy, and, and it is a strategy that you should consider. It's not harmful. You go right back on your medicine. You pick up the dose. Uh, another similar strategy is to talk about a lower dose. If, if you're normally taking 20 milligrams, what if you could take a five or 10 milligram one day a week in anticipation that that, or one day every two weeks or whatever your schedule would be to say, would that help me have better sexual functionality? Mm -hmm. And with your doctor's participation, you can experiment with those things, but don't do it by yourself. Another thing that you, you can do with, um, Side, the side effect of not having, not actually finishing, mm -hmm. that that works well with the drug holiday too. Mm -hmm. You also can use Viagra, mm -hmm. and sometimes Viagra or Cialis will help that, will help you complete the um, mission. Or a, uh, a supplement like L-Arginine. Right, will and L-Arginine is an amino acid, and it's best combined with Ornithine, and both men and women can take that to help um, ejaculation, timing of it, and uh, vaginal wetness. So that's kind of an unknown um, supplement. You can get it over the counter. It's easy to find. You take that. It takes about a month of taking that for you to see the effect. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a little another one thing you can do at home on your own without talking to anybody. It won't interfere with anything. Another strategy that sometimes is helpful is to change your antidepressant. Uh, but again, that requires obviously the prescription for the doctor to change and the discussion with the doctor about changing. Why do you, why do you have me on Effexor instead of Prozac or Prozac mm -hmm. instead of Zoloft or Wellbutrin? And, and very often you have uh, tandem, you have a combination, you have Wellbutrin and Zoloft. Mm -hmm. uh, so you ask about the balance and you ask about changing. So sometimes you get uh, a temporary uh, relief from mm -hmm. the sexual side effects mm -hmm. of Effexor by switching to Prozac because it takes a little while, you, the Effexor goes out of your system and the Prozac has to build up. So in that window, you mm -hmm. have a more normal for you sexual experience. Oftentimes, um, those of us who are pri primary care, because was, I was primary care, right. OBGYN primary care, um, we'll, treat an we'll treat what we perceive as depression from all the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And because we're not asking all the questions, like a psychiatrist might or a psychologist might, we're treating what appears to be depression with an antidepressant which increases serotonin or increases dopamine or increases 
a little bit norepinephrine. That's right. what Effexor does. It, it does serotonin and um, norepinephrine, hoping to get some energy back. But we're treating somebody with ADD, mm. not depression. Yeah. So ADD can make you look and feel depressed because the world's not running fast enough for you or you're missing, you're reading something and you miss reading the most important thing or it's making your job difficult, it's making your oh, home life difficult. you're socially in trouble because you don't have social cue awareness, which is classic yeah. for ADD. Yeah. And then they get in trouble at work and they get in trouble at school. Because... And that makes you depressed because of your situation. Yeah. So the sad part is antidepressants make ADD worse. Mm -hmm. And they make depression worse for ADDers. Yes. So if you feel worse and more depressed right. and have worse Talk sexual side effects, yeah. you don't need serotonin, you need epinephrine. Mm -hmm. And that's what ADD medicine gives you. It's also an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. So ADD medicine stimulates norepinephrine, epinephrine, which elevates your mood. And that's really what you needed. Now, ADDers sometimes take both, but but you don't want to be just on an antidepressant because most of the time that makes you feel worse and it makes your sexual side effects worse. Right. So that's just something to think about. Please don't play doctor, but you may want to nicely say, well, I heard, you know, cause you don't want to confront them or tell them what to do. Right. That's always a bad move with the doctor, except me. So <laughs> you, you want to say, you know, I heard about this. What do you think about that? Cause I have these symptoms that works. And you could do that, and, doc and if your doctor doesn't respond to that, then you just need a new doctor. Well, and a, uh, another strategy, a non-medical strategy, uh, involves reframing your definition of terms. If, typically when men are younger, and I don't know if this is true for women, maybe you can speak to this, but when men are younger, their thought processes about sex and sexual gratification have to do with reaching and achieving orgasm. The payoff is the reason. And so they're all about getting the payoff. And as they get older, if they're lucky, they learn to reframe the payoff concept, to redefine it, mm -hmm. to be about intimacy, about an intimate experience with another human being, and not just about the physiology of orgasm. And if you are suffering from these side effects of depression, it may be that the best thing for you and for your partner in terms of the relationship is to focus on the intimate connection more than the physiological relief of orgasm. Explain what you mean by that. Make sure your partner's taken care of. Take joy and satisfaction and pay attention to what makes them feel good and feel the connectivity as best you can of holding them while they are satisfied, of mm -hmm. attending to them in ways that make them happy, which helps solidify or cement the quality of the relationship mm -hmm. and doesn't do the collateral damage of sex isn't good for us anymore so we may we may be finished right and i hear that sometimes it's it's dr mop and you've got to fix this yeah. you got to fix my wife or you've got to fix my husband or i'm out of here yeah well that puts a lot of pressure on me and the the person that needs to be fixed yeah. and they usually respond by going don't try to fix me. It's not my problem. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the response. That's not really a good approach, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but a loving approach would be what you suggested. And that, to answer your question about women, I can't speak for all women. Right. I don't even know if I can speak to my, to myself. Cause I don't remember being young. It was a long time ago. Uh, but, <laughs> in the old days. but yeah, in the old days, but I think that most women are looking for intimacy and connection in general. Now, maybe the new generation isn't, but I think they still are down deep. And they're, But they're also more educated, so they're looking for the experience. If a woman's had just had sex with somebody who's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, they may never have had an orgasm. They don't even know what they're going for. Mm -hmm. But if they have, then they know what they're going for, and then they know when they don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. But I, well, so you, so it, it's it's in women. I think it's more wanting to 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 be tied to a, a partner, a male or a female, if they're lesbian. So whatever whatever their love object is, to be tied to them, and and to be but tied in a good way, communicating and being knowing all the things about that person, and and mm -hmm. and being more knowledgeable about the person than anyone else in the world. Mm -hmm. But in the sexual area, it's a little different. 
again, requires an openness to the process, an openness to the consideration and better communication. I mean, not the same issue, but a, a similar issue is, is people that become paralyzed, who are not able to physically achieve intercourse and maybe not even physically uh, achieve orgasm as a result of stimulation of the genitalia. Right, because they can't they, feel it. They can have orgasms from focusing on or developing other erogenous zones. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a partner that's willing to do that. That takes a partner that's mm -hmm. willing to facilitate that. But it is doable. And that's a more extreme example. But the same thing can happen with depression and, and sexual side effects from either depression or from antidepressant. And people who've had heart attacks. Yes. Who are afraid, yes. especially men, right. who are afraid to become aroused and afraid to have intercourse, they respond, they're, they're usually on antidepressants too. Yeah. They respond and blockers, a whole bunch nicely of to um, stimulation without expectation, mm -hmm. but then they have to then offer the same thing in return. Right, yeah, yeah, you got So to, there's a lot of my- give to get. Yeah, so a lot of my patients will say, Oh, we don't. We don't need to have. Uh, he doesn't need to have uh, an erection. We we have all kinds of other ways to keep us happy. Right. And I'm like, great. Absolutely. Because great. To me, that that's a good couple who's talked about it and and adjusted, mm -hmm. and they know each other well enough to make each other Some happy. Some people don't realize you can have an orgasm without an erection. Right. You can. So, so anyway, there are two two closing statements that I want to make. One, I want to reemphasize the incredible importance of communication, both with your partner and with your doctor about the things that you know, the questions that you have, the experiences that you have regarding the entire spectrum of sex. And secondly, if you're on an antidepressant or any other medicine that's been prescribed by a physician, don't play with the dosage, don't adjust things on your own unilaterally. Do them in concert with conversations with your physician. That's right. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.